I'm what you call lone wolf. I like to walk alone. I go hunt for the feeling. I thrive out on my own. Look in my eyes, look at the prize, look at the mm, yeah, mm, yeah. heart in my chest, holding my breath. I'm addicted to the game. Hi, my name's Heath Sisko, and welcome to Whitetail Addictions. You know, last year when we brought back Whitetail Addictions, I killed two really good bucks on video, and you can check them out on our YouTube channel. Going into the fall of 2020, I had high expectations, but I could never imagine that I would kill better bucks than the year before. My Ohio season at this point, you know, I couldn't locate my target buck. Uh, I was hunting, bouncing around, but just wasn't having any luck. So in the last week of October, I packed up my stuff and headed to Illinois. All right, 2020, Illinois' trip, here we come. Uh, hopefully uh, we can get into one like we did last year, so uh, see what happens. I'm uh, packed up, ready to roll. It's gonna be a good trip, can't wait. A couple of my friends are already out there, so bucks are starting to move. Let's get it. After arriving in Illinois, I got everything unpacked and set up for the first evening's hunt. October 25th, 2020, first hunt on the uh, Illinois piece of property we have. It's an evening set. I'm overlooking a pick bean field that we overseeded with uh, turnips, radishes, and winter wheat and rye. We've got a northeast wind. Start off the hunt. Chose to pick uh, any of this thing. So we'll see what happens. Sixth, got a north northeast wind this morning. I'm back in the same stand I was in last night. Had that heavy ten come through, pushing several does. It's just after daylight, so we'll sit back. Already have some doe out in the field, so we'll see what happens.
second hunt, so I don't know. I'm looking for something a little bigger. Dang, it was a good one. Keith Sisko is no stranger to the grinding out of the rut in Illinois. Let's take a quick look back at his 2016 here. hunt. The buck should be up looking for does. So. It's about 9.30. I've probably seen 10 different bucks. Yes! Wow! Man, what an exciting morning. I had that buck on me. This is the third time. I had him at 27, 28 yards and at 30 yards. And uh, I was contemplating on whether I was gonna shoot him or not. And uh, he come in here and offered me a 10 yard broadside shot and I just couldn't take it. Get these burrs off of me. Man, it's a heck of a nice buck. Got in here this morning on this uh, flat 
Just knew these bucks being here cruising looking for does. We've had a uh, warm spell the last three or four days. Winds out of the south. And uh, yesterday, rain came through, rained all day. The temperature dropped and we started getting the north wind. And I decided to come in here. I just knew they'd be moving. This buck come through shortly after daylight with a doe. He hung around me all morning. I had him two different times at 27, 28 yards and didn't take the shot because he was missing a four on the right side. But the more I got to looking at him, the more unique I thought he was. And he come back in and offered me a 10 yard shot. And I couldn't pass it up. evening of October 29th got a north northwest wind and been seeing a uh, tight rack 10 over here with uh, long points We're coming in to get a better hopefully a closer look at him to see if he's a buck that I might want to harvest I'm hoping that wind keeps kicking a little bit to the west because if it stays dead north and kicks back east a little bit, it's not going to be good. So. After seeing several good bucks, I had to head home for a few days. My plan was to come back out around November the 6th. The weather warmed up and I didn't make it back out till the 10th. My plan was to locate a buck we call Lefty and have several years of history with, including this shed that my good friend Justin Hollinsworth found two years prior. November the 8th in Illinois, I just got out here. It's 76 degrees. And instead of uh, getting my stuff ready and going out on post tonight, I wanted to uh, poke around in this uh, section that I'm going to be hunting over the next week, week and a half. And uh, looking for good sign, checking to see where the does are bedded, see if I could jump any good bucks. Because uh, after today, I'm messing the property all up, picking out some trees where I may want to hunt, uh, hanging a few sets. Then uh, after today, it's going to be tiptoeing around and uh, not uh, messing things up in here. But I found some good sign. It's exactly what I'm looking for. But you know it is November the 8th, so I'm looking for doe bedding area. But uh, 
seeing that, knowing there's a big one in here, so. from my morning set. I can see a lot of action over here on this ridge. So, come over here scouting it out. I always have one of these in my pack. Just trying to figure out how often that buck's over here. So, I'm gonna go ahead. Got some big rubs down through here. Nice trail. We'll go ahead and strap this thing on it. See what we got. I'm over here on the south end of the farm or this block uh, where I know he's spending some time so I'm looking to hang a set back here but coming up through here to see exactly where he comes across and you can see some fresh rubs right there small stuff There's some beds here. there's a ton of deer staying over in here there's another nice fresh rub oh yeah how fresh that that's real green but right there is exactly what i'm looking for there's a giant rug holy cow that's a stud look at this thing wow look at that man alive so you can see where this is where he's entering the bean field i mean that rub right there proves it so I gotta go back here, find another spot, and hang. So I'll have one for a south wind, then I'll have a couple spots for a north wind. And that, that ought to be, that ought to have it covered. And then what I'll do is each time I go hunt, one of those spots, if the movement varies a little bit, then I'll just rip down my stand and go uh, move it over. That's what's so nice about this Lone Wood Custom Gear stuff. It's so light, so compact, and so easy to throw up. And you gotta be able to be mobile. Because these big bucks can change in an instant. I mean, especially with uh, with uh, us being in the middle of the rut. Snatch him slipped through about 60 yards this morning, headed back to bed. Their bed's in this little patch of it's probably about 20 acres. I've been hunting on the south side of it, which is probably about 60 or 70 acres. I just haven't been able to see him, get pictures of him at night, but that's it. So now I gotta set up a game plan. Now I'm gonna
seen that buck drop down in here out of the beans field the other day and Justin jumped him over here about a week ago. So it's supposed to rain tonight. So I'm coming in here. It's probably about four o'clock. The wind's coming out of the north, so I assume he's not gonna be better than here, but I'm gonna come in here and check this out. So my plan is it's a really good path right here. some beds. It's a perfect little knoll for him to bed on. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Alright. This is perfect. Giant bed right there. See that? Overlooking that valley. There's another one. There's a great big one up here. He's got that war down in there. Nothing scuffed up, but it's just on this little point. Oh, there's another big one right here. So I've seen all I need to see. With the south wind, it'll be coming over this and dropping off. More than likely. When he come in the other day, he dropped down in here and he come in low, almost guaranteed it. And come right up in here to one of these two beds. The next south wind I get, it's either gonna be probably looping around there or looping around here. And right there is where I need to be. But look at that. It doesn't get much better than that.
I think I heard him go down. It's November the 16th. I've been chasing this buck we call Lefty. He's just a huge buck. Uh, bouncing around in different areas on this farm and uh, haven't been able to get on him. Seen him three times with just 45 yards the closest I've had him. So, uh, I hung a set here two days ago. He likes bedding on this little point right here. And um, there's several doe in the area as well, so I was hoping he would come slipping back in here this morning, either in bed or following a doe. And he come in here following a doe this morning. I heard him up there crunting, and the next thing I know, I see a doe walk through, and he was right behind her. He come through at like 15 yards, and I freaking put the hammer on him. Oh, so excited. I've reviewed the footage. It looked like a good hit. It may have just been a tad low. And finally, when it comes together, oh, it's just icing on the cake. I love this. Oh, it's a grind, man. It is a grind. You just gotta keep your mind right. Oh, and when, they, when I first seen him over rubbing that tree, I started getting the shakes. I was like, calm down. You got to, I mean, I was putting off so much energy. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. But uh, I'm going to get down. I can see my arrow from here. There's my arrow. I can see the hair. He's huge. Right there's where I shot him. Gosh, he's a giant. Look at that beast. Oh, I drilled him. Oh, Lefty, wow. Later on that season, I was able to get on and hunt down an Ohio buck. Even though my season just ended, I can't stop thinking about putting out cams, picking out a target buck to feed my addiction this coming fall. Hi, this is Andre Custo from Lone Wolf Custom Gear. I wanted to thank you for watching Whitetail Addictions and ask that you become one of our silent partners by hitting the YouTube subscribe button and following us on Facebook and Instagram.